Hi guys, uh, Dr. Tim Cruz, Elementary Statistics. We're going to do hypothesis testing, difference of means. We're going to see if the average, mean means average, we're going to see if the average of two populations is different enough to matter, if it's significantly different. different. Uh, in this case, we don't know the population standard deviation sigma, so we're going to have to use the t-table. And I'm going to use the traditional method, uh, you know, shading in a critical region and putting our test uh, statistic on the graph and seeing if it lands in the critical region. If it does, we can reject the null hypothesis. All right, let's kind of uh, read through this problem here and look at an example. Um, in the journal Mental Retard Retardation, an article reported the results of a peer tutoring program to help mildly retarded children learn to read. In the experiment, the mildly retarded children were randomly divided into two groups. The exper experimental group received peer tutoring along with regular instruction, and the control group received regular instruction, but no peer tutoring. There were 30 in each group. It's saying N1 equals 30 and N2 equals 30. And I just start organizing my information here. The first thing that I recommend you do is give your group one a name, something that makes sense for your word problem. So group one is the experimental group where they got peer tutoring and group two is the control group where they did not get peer tutoring. So the first thing you do as you're reading through this, figure out what group one is and what group two is. And then when we get to the challenge here in a minute, we can decide what symbol to put in between them, whether they're not the same or this one's less than that one or this one is bigger than that one. We'll decide that in a second. So here's our group one, group two n equals 30, n equals 30. Uh, the Gates-McGinney reading test was given to both groups before instruction began. For the experimental group, these guys over here, the mean score, that's average, all right? So that's your X bar, your average for your sample, for your 30 kids in your sample. The average was uh, 344.5, give or take. That's what sample standard deviation kind of means. Give or take 49.7. 49.7. For the control group, that's group two, the mean score, mean means average, x bar means average, that's average of your sample. The x bar on the same test was 354, give or take, that's sample standard deviation, give or take 50.3. All right, use a 5% level of significance, that's alpha, lowercase a stands for alpha, alpha stands for how significant you want to uh, make this, you know, how big a deal is it before you say, yes, this is significantly different. All right, so 5% is the level we're choosing. And we're going to test the hypothesis that there was no difference in the vocabulary scores of the two groups before the instruction began. All right, if it's no difference, we're saying that this is not equal to that. No difference. Their claim, their advertised claim, their null hypothesis, is going to be that both the groups are exactly the same. Our challenge, all right, our test, our challenge, is that they're different. So let's set up our hypothesis now. <clears throat> the null hypothesis, H sub zero, that's the null hypothesis. That's the advertised claim. It's the accepted value. It's, it's a claim that we want to test. So they claim that both the groups are the same. This is kind of how this is always going to look. Group one, is the same as group two. The average uh, reading score of the peer tutoring group was the same as the average reading score of the control group. So the null hypothesis is always going to say the two are equal. That's always going to be equals. All right. The challenge, our alternate hypothesis, H sub one, is going to be, we're going to say the first group is not equal to the second group, or we might say is smaller than the second group, or we might say is greater than or bigger than the second group. It just depends on the wording up here. So we're challenging. We're going to test the hypothesis that there is no difference. They're talking about the null hypothesis. The null hypothesis says they are exactly the same. They're saying they're equal. We want to test this. That's what hypothesis testing is. Somebody makes a claim like these two groups are equal. That's a claim that they, you know, uh, they advertise. That's an accepted belief. We want to test it. We want to say, no, 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 they are not equal. All right. So based on our data, 
you know, based on the average for group one and the average for group two, it looks like they're definitely not the same. It looks like they're pretty far apart. But are they far enough apart to be significant? Are they far apart, far enough apart that anybody cares? You know, does it matter? That's what significance means. So we're going to test this and see if these guys are far enough different that I can reject what the null hypothesis is claiming. All right, step two, we need to draw a curve and just kind of see where our rejection region lands. Now, our significance level is 5%. That means we need 5% of the curve shaded, all right? If this is a two-tailed test, and whenever it does not equal, that's a two-tailed test, we're saying it could be lower or it could be higher. We're, we're not making a claim either way. We're just saying it's not equal to. So we have a two-tailed test, and I need to shade 5% of the curve. Well, if you're splitting it into two parts, that means 2.5% here. See, if you bump the decimal two more places, that's 2.5% and 2.5%. So that's 2.5% here and 2.5% here for a total of 5%. That means there's 95% here in the white area, 2.5% here, 2.5% here for a total of 100%. So now that I've got my, we call these uh, rejection regions, or we call them critical regions, this is the area where I can reject what they claim. I can reject their claim that the population averages are the same if it lands in this rejection region or this rejection region. Now, if it lands in the white area, I have to accept what they claim. All right, we're going to say it the hard way and say, well, I failed to reject HO. See, we're trying to get our test to land here or here. That's what we're trying to do, because then we can reject what they said. But if our test lands here instead, I have to just accept what they said. I tried to reject what they said, and I failed if it lands here in the white. All right. I need to figure out where to draw these lines so that I have 2.5% left and 2.5% right. So I need these lines here. Now I have to use the T table for these values because I don't know the population standard deviation. If population sigma is given to you, population standard deviation is given to you, you can use the Z table. If they don't give that to you, then we have to use the T table. All right, probably the quickest way to find those numbers where you draw the line is to use your uh, TI-84. I'm going to hit uh, distribution right here. So second distribution. And what I want is a, a backwards T, all right, inverse T. That means I'm going to give them this area over here on the left. I'm going to give them a 2.5% area. And they're going to work backwards and tell me what the T number is where I can draw that line. So a backwards T, an inverse T. I give them the area, and they tell me what the T is. If you have a TI-84, that's kind of the quickest way to do it. So what's the area? 2.5%, 0.025. Now next is degrees of freedom. All right. Degrees of freedom is one less than your smallest group. Now both our groups are group 30. One less than that is 29. So I made a note over here. Degrees of freedom is 29. My level of significance is 5%. So degrees of freedom, 29. Paste that into your calculation window. Hit enter one more time. And it tells you, uh, you draw this line over here on the left at, whoops, I lost my pencil. There we go. You draw this line over here on the left about two steps to the left of zero. But we also have to draw this line over here, which would be the same number but positive. So two steps left and two steps right, we're going to draw a line. So specifically, negative 2.045. If we go three decimal places and round, it's two and just a hair more steps to the left. Now here's zero. Here's one step to the left. Here's two steps to the left. And we go just a hair more. Draw the line, shade to the left. That's 2.5% of the curve. If you do the same thing on the positive side here, there's zero, there's one step right, there's two steps right and just a hair more. If you draw a line there and shade to the right, that's the other 2.5% of the curve. All right, now you can also use your T table here. Now remember what you're looking for. You're looking for a two-tailed area, and it was an area of 5%. That's 0.05. So I want 5% of the curve broken into two tails, 
and then I scroll down to my degrees of freedom, which is 29. So in a two-tailed area with 5% of the curve shaded in, I scroll down, down, down to 29, almost there, and there it is right there, 2.045. So it's going to be 2.045 steps to the right and 2.045 steps to the left is where I would start shading. All right, pretend you don't see this dot here. That's the results of our test. We're going to call that T star. We're going to call that our test statistic. So using our sample, our sample for group one and our sample for group two, using the numbers we got from our samples, I'm going to convert those into a dot that I can place on my picture and see where it lands. So here's your formula for your test statistic, T star. You subtract both of your samples, and then minus both of the populations. So let's stay on top here and just move over here real quick. X bar 1, that was the average of group 1, 344.5. The average of group 2, X bar 2, 354. Okay, so far so good. I want to see the difference between the two groups. We're trying to figure out if the difference is big enough to matter, if it's significant. Now this part here is kind of over explaining, but Group 1 minus group 2, we're assuming that they were telling the truth and that the groups are equal. We don't really know what those numbers are. I don't know what mu for group 1 is and mu for group 2 is. But assuming they're equal, well, if they were equal, anything minus itself is 0. So this is kind of an extra part that we don't really need. I'm going to leave this off on the next two problems. All right, so it's sample average 1 minus sample average 2 and then we'll leave off the minus zero in the future. Over here, fill in your standard deviation group one, standard deviation, deviation group two. Remember to square them. Divided by 30, divided by 30, and add those. All right, works out to negative 0.736. What I'm doing is I'm taking the difference between my averages, and I am dividing it by, this is an adjusted standard deviation mess down here. All right, what it's doing is it's taking the difference and dividing it by standard deviation to tell you how many steps left or right to take, you know, speaking T language, speaking in one, two, three numbers. So I convert my raw data, divide it by a standard deviation adjustment, and I get that I should put my dot to the left about seven tenths of a step. All right, you got to kind of eyeball that. So about seven tenths of a step to the left, here's zero. Here's one whole step to the left, but I only want about 7 tenths. Now halfway would be 5 tenths and a little bit more, 7 tenths. It's right about there. So my test statistic landed here in the white. That kind of means I lose. I wanted it to land over here or over here. And then I could say, no, you guys are wrong. What you're claiming is incorrect. These groups are significantly different. Now I did run samples, and I do see that they are different. X bar 1 and X bar 2, yeah, they're different, and minus means difference. But is that difference big enough to matter? Turns out it's not. It's not big enough to matter. So I have to say that even though I have some data that showed they were different, they weren't different enough. So what I have to do is accept what you said. I have to accept your claim. Uh, I have to accept the null hypothesis. Unfortunately, that they don't let us use these words here. They make us say it the hard way. I tried to reject what you said. I was trying to reject your claim. I tried to reject it, and I failed. All right? It means the same thing as accept the null hypothesis. But we have to say fail to reject the null hypothesis. And then uh, after you draw a conclusion, this is your conclusion. It's either going to be reject the null or fail to reject the null. After you draw a conclusion, then you just have to interpret it. You're kind of explaining it to the people who don't know how to talk statistics. And I always write it the same way. There is not enough evidence at the whatever your level of significance is to conclude that. And then the rest of it is just the rephrasing your challenge from the word problem. So I'm saying that I tried to reject what they claimed and I failed. I'm saying I did not get enough evidence to do what I was trying to do. I was trying to reject their null hypothesis, 
and I didn't have enough evidence to do that, so I failed. There is not enough evidence at the 5% level of significance to conclude that, and then I just go back up to the word problem and I copy the challenge. My challenge was that there was a significant difference. I was saying the two groups were significantly different in the vocabulary scores between the experimental group and the control group. That's basically just copying what you were challenging. They said the groups were the same. I said, no, they're different, but I didn't have enough evidence to prove that. I failed to reject what they claim. All right, I got two more problems I want to work with you here. This is the second problem. The pathogen blah, 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 blah causes bell peppers to wilt and die. Because bell peppers are an important commercial crop, this disease has undergone a great deal of agricultural research. It is thought that too much water aids the spread of this pathogen. Two fields are under study. The first step in the research project is to compare the mean soil water content for the two fields. Units are percent water by volume of soil. Okay, uh, they got field A and field B. Well, that's easy. I'm just gonna label the first group field A and the second group field B. Now, I haven't figured this part out yet, but it's coming, all right? Now, usually they give us X bar and uh, S. They usually give us the average and the standard deviation, but in this case here, they just gave us a bunch of data, and we're gonna have to calculate those values for ourselves on the calculator. Uh, let's see, where am I? Uh, assuming the distribution of soil water content in each field is mound-shaped and symmetric, that's just something they have to tell us, that our data will fall in the shape of a mound, Using a use a 5% level of significance to test the claim that field A has, on average, a higher soil water content than field B. Okay, there's our clue. They're saying A is bigger than B. So whatever the A average is, it's significantly bigger than B. So this is a greater than. It's important that you kind of get this straight, you know, while you're listing all your data. All right, group one, I just counted those, but your calculator will do it for you as well. There's 14 in that group. I don't know population average. I don't know population standard deviation, which means I'm going to use the t-table. Uh, X, I'll show you how to do this in a second. X bar, turns out it's that, and S, it turns out it's that. Same thing for field B. They have more values. They did 16 tests. Population data is still unknown, means we use the t-table for our test statistic. And I'll show you how to calculate these on the calculator. How significant do they want us to be? 5%, right there. Use a 5% level of significance. And degrees of freedom is one less than your smallest group. My smallest group is 14, so my degrees of freedom will be 13. All right, so let's grab our calculator and put some data in our calculator. So I'm going to start with stat. All right, and I'm going to choose edit because that'll take me to my table where I can enter my data. Now I have some old data from another problem here, and I want to clear those. You can hit the delete button over and over and over if you want to, but there's quicker ways. Let me just show you a quicker way real quick. You see memory above the plus sign there? If you pull up memory, second function, memory, there's a choice there that says clear all lists. So option number four, I'm going to choose that. It says, are you sure that's what you want to do? And I just hit enter and say yes, and this is done. So back to stat, edit, and now all my lists are clear. All right, so list one, I'm going to go ahead and enter field A data, and I'll show you. I'm going to go ahead and put field B in list two. I'm just going to kind of do it all at once, and I'll show you how to work that. Okay, so I have entered all my data. Uh, there's 10, 2, 10, 5, 15, 5. I've entered that in list one, and 8, 3, 8, 7, 8, 4, etc. I've entered that in list two. You could do these one at a time and just put your data in list one and calculate and then start over and put your second group in list one and calculate. Nothing wrong with that, but I just wanted to show you, you can use both of these lists for both your groups. All right, I want to calculate the statistics for list one. So I'm going to hit stat. I'm going to choose calculate, one to the right. And it says the first option is one variable statistics. That's what I want. Now the next question it should ask you is what list do you want to work off of? Let's do list one first. Now list one is right there above the one. See it in blue, list one. So I want to do second function, list one. All right, 
frequency list, don't mess with calculate. It's just asking you, are you ready to calculate? Hit enter. And there's all your data for group one. Uh, 12.51. Here's the exact average, you know, all the way out there. That's about as exact as we can get on this calculator. I just wrote 12.51. Usually that's enough to get you the right answer. If you're not sure, go four decimal places, like 5143 if you round it. Uh, you know, the further you go, the more numbers you use, the more accurate your answer will be. Uh-oh. Let's go back to, uh oh Totally messed this up. Don't panic. Oh, uh, we're back. Okay. So the more uh, more digits you use, the better your answer will be. But lots of times you can get away with just using two numbers after the decimal, two decimal places. Your standard deviation is 2.41. All right. Uh, if that gets you the right answer, you can get away with using 2.41. If it doesn't quite get you the right answer, you need to come back and grab that whole number. All right. The more digits you use after the decimal, the better your answer is going to be, the more accurate it'll be. And there it's telling you, by the way, that you had 14 in this group. Now let's go back to STAT and let's calculate the same thing for group 2. All right, group 2 is in list 2. That field B, field B, that's group 2. I need to switch to list 2. And list 2 is right there above the number 2. So switch to list 2, enter, enter, enter. And there's your data for list two. 10.79 if you want to be a little less exact, and 2.38 if you want to be a little less exact. Of course, using more numbers is better. It gets you a, a more accurate answer. Okay, we're ready for our uh, challenge here. So we're saying field A has a higher content than field B. We're saying field A is bigger than field B. So that's going to be our challenge. Our challenge is field A, on average, is bigger than field B on average. Mean means average. Population mean means population average. The null hypothesis always says they're the same. Group one is the same as group two. The water content in field A is the same as the water content in field B. I'm gonna say no, all right? This is a claim that I wanna test. So I'm testing them, I'm saying no. I think group one, I think field A, has significantly more water than field B, all right? That's kind of what my sample is telling me here. The average of my sample, the average of those 14 fields that I tested or 14 samples that I took, that 12.51 looks like it's significantly higher than field two. Those 16 samples I took and averaged, it looks like field one does have a significantly higher average than field two, or field A has a significantly higher average than field B. But I got to test this and see if it's a big enough difference to matter, to see if it's significant. But that's my challenge. My challenge is that field one has more water content than field two. The null hypothesis says now everything's fine. Both the fields are the same. I'm going to test their claim. Let's draw a picture here. All right, 5%. And this is a greater than challenge. Greater than challenge means you want a right-tailed test over here. So I need 5% of the curve shaded to the right. I got to look up this T number here, all right? Now, when I'm doing it on my calculator, on the calculator, I'm telling the calculator I want the area to the left. So I'm going to give it the area to the left. That's 95%. If this is 5%, this would be 95%. So I'm going to tell it, I'm going to tell the calculator, hey, there's 95% of the curve to the left. Tell me what this T number is where I draw this line and start shading. All right, so just like last time, we do second distribution. I want the backwards T. I'm going to give it an area of 95%, and it's going to tell me what T number gives you an area of 95% to the left. So I want to change this to 95% of the curve is to the left. I need my degrees of freedom. That's up here, 13. It's one less than your smallest group. So 13 paste it into your calculation window, tell it to calculate, and it says, hey, you need to draw that line at 1.77 and shade to the right. So 1.771 to be more precise. 
All right, now I can find that same number on my T table. I just have to realize that I'm looking for a one-tailed area this time. So I want 5% of the curve shaded, one tail. I'm going to shade to the right. So 5% one tail area and go down to 13 degrees of freedom. And there it is right there. So start shading at 1.771. Okay, now again, pretend you don't see the dot there because that's where your test landed. We haven't run our test yet, so pretend you don't see that. Let's run our test based on our data. All right, step three, T star, that's our test statistic. I'm gonna see the difference between my samples, my water content average for field A minus my water content average for field B. I know they're different. I'm trying to figure out if they're different enough to matter. So I'm gonna find that difference and I'm gonna divide it by standard deviation. This is kind of an adjusted standard deviation mess down here. So I'm gonna take my data, the difference between my data, and I'm gonna divide it by standard deviation to see how many steps left or right I put my dot. So I do the math, and I turn out that my test statistic, my dot, needs to be 1.96 steps to the right. Here's zero, here's one step to the right, here's two steps to the right. 1.96 is just shy of that. So my dot's right about in there, all right? It's clearly past the line, the line is 1.7 steps to the right. I'm going 1.9 steps to the right. So I'm clearly past that line. I'm in the shaded area. This is the rejection region. That means that I, that means that I win basically, all right? Their claim was that there's no difference between the two populations. The population averages are equal. I'm going to test their claim. I'm gonna challenge their claim and say no, Group one, field A, has a lot more water than field B. That's my challenge. I ran my test, I placed the results of my test right here, and I noticed that it's in the rejection region. I have enough evidence to say, no, you're wrong. I reject your claim, I reject HO, I reject the null hypothesis. All right, so that's my conclusion. I reject your claim, and now I just have to explain it. I have to interpret it. So when I reject their claim, that means, hey, I did have enough evidence, all right? I have enough evidence at the 5% level of significance to conclude that, and this was my challenge here, that field A has a higher average soil water content than field B. That was my challenge just right from the word problem. So you either, it, you either have enough evidence or not. So this is gonna say there is or is not at whatever level of significance to conclude that, and then you restate your challenge, all right? So since I was able to reject what they claimed, that means I had enough evidence to prove them wrong. All right, and last example here. In large corporations, an intimidator is an employee who tries to stop communication, sometimes sabotage others, and above all, likes to listen to him or her, herself talk. Let group one, X1, be a random variable representing productive hours per week lost by peer employees of an intimidator. So if your boss is an intimidator, these are the random hours you lose, you know, based on their sample. Looks like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven samples. If your boss is a stressor, uh, let's see, it says employee. A stressor is an employee with a hot temper that leads to unproductive tantrums in corporate society. Let X2 be a random variable representing productive hours per week lost by peer employees of a stressor. Oh, okay, so this is a coworker, it's not a boss. So if your coworker is an intimidator, these are the hours of uh, work lost per week by their fellow employees, peer employees. If your uh, coworker is a stressor, then these are the average hours of work lost by the fellow employees of a stressor. All right, assuming the variables X1 and X2 are independent, do the data indicate that the popula population mean lo time lost due to stressors is greater than the average, mean means average, average time lost due to intimidators? All right, let's think about this. I put this one on here because the, they're trying to trick you with the words. That sounds like group one should be greater than group two, but you gotta read this. That's why I tell you guys, make sure you label your data, all right? Group one is the intimidator group, all right? Your coworker is an intimidator. Group two is the stressor group. Your coworker is a stressor. Now, 
now that I have my groups labeled, it says they want stressors to be greater than intimidators. That means this inequality symbol needs to open up toward the stressors. All right. If you guys remember the alligator, alligator eats the bigger number. They're saying stressors is bigger than intimidators. Stressors is bigger than intimidators, which means intimidators is smaller than stressors. So we have to put a less than symbol there. Even though they use the words greater than, they tricked you because they put the word stressor first. So they want stressor bigger than intimidator, which means intimidator smaller than stressor. Just make sure that greater than is opening up toward the stressor. Be careful about that. All right, we've organized all our information here, and I showed you last time how to put the data in your, on the last problem, I showed you how to put the data in your calculator and get your sample average for both groups and your standard deviation for both groups. Now, I added a bunch more numbers on this one because for me, when I worked this out, I didn't quite get the right answer because I used 4.00 and 5.38 and 2.38 and 2.72. And I didn't quite get the right answer. It was really, really close, but it wasn't quite right. So just a lesson for you. If you can't quite get your answer to match up to what it's supposed to be, just go back and use more exact versions of your X bar and your S. Our level of significance is 5% uh, alpha. And degrees of freedom is one less, one lower than your smallest group, so six. All right, hypothesis, null hypothesis says both the groups are the same. That's always going to be equals. Your challenge is, no, they're not the same. Specifically, I'm saying group one is smaller than group two. All right, that's our challenge. This is their claim, and this is our challenge. We are testing their claim. This is our hypothesis test. Let's go ahead and run the test now. All right, draw a picture. Now, since this is a less than, that's a left tail, I want 5% there. And I have to look that up either on the calculator or, uh, you know, with the table. I got to look up where to draw this line so that I shade 5% of the curve. And using the calculator or the table and six degrees of freedom, I come up with a negative 1.943 T number. So here's zero. Here's one step to the left. There's two steps to the left, but I only want 1.9 steps to the left. So about there. So I want to draw my line just a little short of two steps to the left and shade, and that shades in 5% of this curve. So I have a 5% rejection region here. This is where I can reject the null hypothesis. I can reject what they claim. But if it lands over here in the white area, I have 95% over here. If my test lands in the white area, well, then I have to accept their claim. I'm trying to challenge them. It has to land over here before I'm right. All right, let's run the test. <clears throat> so based on my data, all right, based on my data, it looks like group one is lower than group two. Group one average was four. Group two average was 5.38. Well, I find the difference. I subtract the two to find the difference. And yeah, it looks like group one is a lot lower than group two, but is it significantly lower? Is it low enough that anybody cares? All right, I take my averages, I take the difference between my averages, and I divide it by kind of an adjusted standard deviation, and that tells me how many steps left or right to place my dot. So I want to take one step to the left and just a hair more. Here's zero, here's one step to the left and just a hair more. That's where my test lands. All right, it wasn't quite far enough. It needed to go a little bit further and land over here for me to win, for me to be able to reject. So I failed, all right? Now this is the number I came up with using the rounded 2.38 and 2.72. And actually the answer I was looking for was negative 1.044. You can get this answer if you go back to your data and use the more exact version of all of these numbers, all right? Use all the numbers you can. And if you make these numbers more exact, you will wind up at negative 1.044. But it was pretty darn close anyway, even using the rounded data. Just depends on how exact you want your answer to be. All right, I failed. I tried to challenge their claim, and I failed. So I cannot reject what they said. They said the groups are close enough. I tried to say no, and I failed, which means I did not have enough evidence. I wanted to reject what they said. I wanted to say the groups are significantly different. 
but I failed. I did not have enough evidence at the 5% level of significance to conclude that and then just restate your challenge. I'm saying this is my challenge, but I didn't have enough evidence to prove that. I didn't have enough evidence to reject what you said. I have to accept your claim. And the claim was, uh, my challenge was, time loss due to stressors is significantly greater than the average time loss due to intimidators. All right, I just copied that off the word problem because that's how they presented it to us. They said group two is bigger than group one. All right, to run the test, we ran it as a less than. This is how they said it. Group two is greater than group one, but we don't want to do it that way. We want group one less than group two. All right, guys, that's it for today.